I want to start the analysis of oligopolies. And it's very different than it was for monopolists and perfectly competitive firms. It's it's not really that simple marginal revenue equals marginal cost, even though that idea does show up again. It's not quite that simple as, as it had been. So let me start off with just an introduction to our analysis tool. Uh, our analysis tool is called Game Theory. And Game Theory at present is about 70 years old. Uh, it was introduced into existence uh, at least the type we're using, about 1949. There, there was game theory prior to that, uh, but it was a very different structure uh, that I may or may not mention as we go. So what happened in 1949? Well, what happened was this guy over here on the right. His name is John Nash. And John Nash uh, was a young mathematician uh, he, he's from Bluefield, West Virginia. So I, I want you to know that he's, he's local, right? He's from the mountains here. And his father was an engineer in the coal mines over in Bluefield. Uh, and he had quite an aptitude for mathematics and was thinking, hey, I want to become an engineer like my father. And so he went to school up at uh, Mellon University in Pittsburgh. And while he was up there, uh, he, he started to kind of fall in love with mathematics. Uh, and it's, it's interesting, he, he was really good at it. And he wanted to go to graduate school, to some big name school. And he approached his advisor and asked his advisor if he would write a letter of recommendation for him to see if he could get in at Princeton University. Well, he did, and I've often thought, well, I wish, I wish somebody could have written this letter for me. It didn't have to be long. All the advisor said was, this man is a genius, and signed it and sent it to Princeton. Uh, and so Princeton University, that was their first introduction to John Nash, at least that I know of. Uh, so who is John Nash? Well, he is the creator of something called non-cooperative game theory. And once again, I, I don't want you to think that he invented or created the mathematics for game theory. A, a lot of what he did was an extension from a guy by the name of John von Neumann and Oscar Morgenstern, and also uh, on the faculty at Princeton. So. Uh, but their form of game theory was what we call a zero-sum game. And you're probably used to playing games like this. One person's gain is the other person's loss. So you might think of some sort of a betting game, and it's zero-sum. You know, one person is going to win something, the other person is going to lose that amount. Uh, but John Nash came along, and he de he developed this idea of non-cooperative games, which is very different. In fact, um, I think it's kind of interesting, having written a dissertation, you know, it took me about 180 pages of words and, and many, many more pages of, of pictures and mathematics to come up with something worthy of getting a PhD. You can read John Nash's dissertation if you want. It's in this hypertext. It took him about 30 pages and not only did it only take him 30 pages to write this dissertation, uh, in 1994, he and two others won a Nobel Prize for their work in non-cooperative game theory. And it was a big deal, right? So what is game theory and who uses it? Well, um, I guess I've already given this. Here are some of the disciplines that use game theory. They started out in mathematics. Well, let me back up again. Oscar Morgenstern and John von Neumann are a mix. One's a mathematician, one's an economist. So it kind of started out in mathematics and econ. Uh, John Nash, his extension was strictly mathematics. John Nash was, was working on a PhD at Princeton University, and his dissertation was about 
uh, this non-cooperative game theory. And by the way, there is a movie that they've made about John Nash. He suffered from schizophrenia and in, I don't know, early 2000s, late 1990s, uh, Ron Howard produced or directed a movie called A Beautiful Mind. That's John Nash. If you've, if you've seen it, you may have some insight into John Nash. Well, as soon as John Nash published his findings, Econ latched on to game theory as, as a tool used to analyze oligopolies because it explained the interdependence and it, uh, it seemed reasonable. Now, I'll take you through some games in an instant that economists threw out there and said, what, what about this, what about this, that were disturbing at first, but I think we've settled in after 70 years and we're pretty sure game theory is here to stay and it has become a main staple uh, in not only oligopoly analysis, but also in uh, the analysis of contracts, uh, the analysis, uh, let me think for a second, of government policy and consumer, some consumer theory. All right, the early 1970s, biology picked it up. I, I think the biologists thought they had invented their own thing, but uh, they came up with a version of, of what we'll look at later of uh, Nash's equilibrium idea. And the only difference between what biologists came up with and what John Nash came up with is an inequality. Theirs was a strict inequality. Nash's was a weak inequality. Other than that, everything was the same. So all of a sudden, biology and evolutionary biology grabbed on to game theory. Uh, anthropology grabbed on to game theory. I, I only know this because in the early 2000s, when I was at Idaho State University, I had an anthropologist and his grad student ask me if I would help them with the game theory in their, in their paper. And it was kind of fun. I have never taken an anthropology class but I have to admit, looking and constructing a game in this anthropology for this anthropologist was pretty fun. Uh, political science, military science, all of these are now using game theory. So a tool we'd never seen before, at least not in the format John Nash put it in. 1949, he gets his dissertation done. By 1994, Nash and two others are winning a Nobel Prize for the work they did in the 50s and 60s. All right, I will, I'm gonna end this video with just that introduction, and I will start into the structure of a game next. So we'll do the structure, and then we'll talk about solutions, and then we'll do some examples, and then we'll look at how it gets used in econ. That's my intention with these videos.